Excellencies, distinguished guests, on this, the 46th anniversary of the Soweto Youth Uprising, which occurred in 1976 in Soweto, Johannesburg, I thank the Chair for convening this timely and important conversation on the Palestinian question, and I convey my gratitude to the United Nations Committee on the exercise of the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people for inviting South Africa to deliver this message of solidarity. The events and images the world has witnessed in the past months emerging from the occupied Palestinian territories evoke unpleasant memories of life under apartheid rule in South Africa. Having experienced apartheid in South Africa, the images of Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan, as well as the violent clashes between armed security forces and defenseless protesters are reminiscent of events that took place in Sophia Town and District 6 between 1955 and 1965 in apartheid South Africa. It reminds us of the Sharpeville massacre of 1961 and the Soweto protests of 1976 that I referred to earlier. As South Africans, we find semblance in our past with the Palestinian cause. We defied oppression by a race that deemed itself superior, entrenched through the Nationalist Party's systemic apartheid regime, and witnessed the birth of a free and democratic South Africa. This birth was made possible through the steadfastness of our people fighting for their freedom, as well as the assistance and solidarity of the international community, with the United Nations taking a leading role. This is what we hope will obtain for the Palestinian people. In our new democratic dispensation, 16th of June is a day in which South Africans honour the youth that were ambushed by apartheid police forces in Soweto. I recall the funeral of Shireen Akleh and those scenes of her coffin being abused were so reminiscent of the burials we had to conduct under the oppression of apartheid soldiers under apartheid. On that day of 16th June, we remember the bravery of our young fallen heroes and draw parallels with the Palestinian youth activists advocating for change in the occupied Palestinian territories. We are reminded of the young Palestinian women and men who are illegally held in military prisons denied access to their basic rights and subjected to torture and misconduct, their youth stolen from them, all because they want freedom and a better life, just as we did. Given our painful history and the role of the youth in the liberation struggle of South Africa, we cannot turn a blind eye to the discrimination and injustices Palestinians are subjected to under Israel's illegal occupation of the Palestinian territories. The reports by Israeli non-governmental organizations, followed by those such as the report of Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, are significant in raising global awareness of the conditions that Palestinians are subjected to. Discussions based on these reports are necessary as they provide credence and support, an overwhelming body of factual evidence presented by various reputable human rights organizations, all pointing to the fact that the State of Israel is committing crimes of apartheid and prosecution against Palestinians. Chairperson, the non-governmental organizations have done their part in preparing reports and bringing attention to the situation. The responsibility now rests with us 
as UN member states to take the necessary action, as was eventually done by the UN with apartheid South Africa. As the international community, we must act on these persisting injustices that are faced by the Palestinian people under the illegal Israeli occupation. We must emphasize Israel's accountability for the suffering and inhumane conditions Palestinians have been subjected to for the past 73 years. Palestinians living in occupied Palestinian territories are denied fundamental freedoms and rights through systemic discrimination and subjugation of an Israel-designed system. These unacceptable practices should not continue under our watch, and we as UN member states have a responsibility to act to end this injustice. As the international community, we must stand firmly against illegal Israel actions against the Palestinian people. The reality remains that, as was the case in South Africa, self-determination and peace cannot prevail without broad-based international condemnation and action to enforce international law. As the international community, we have an obligation to speak up and take action to ensure that Israel is held accountable for her violations of international law, international humanitarian and international human rights law, including laws on the prohibition of the acquisition of territory by force. Chairperson, our country, South Africa, remains deeply concerned by the continued contravention of UN Security Council resolutions on the Palestinian matter. The Council's inability to act against Israel, despite their willingness to act against other states, is for us an illustration of the double standards and inconsistency in the work of the Security Council. The question of Palestine remains deadlock and is worsening. We should not allow the absence of accountability to become the norm for our organization. In this regard, as member states, we must use all international legal mechanisms to end Israel's impunity. We believe that the only way to bring lasting peace is to have a comprehensive and unconditional negotiated settlement to end the Israel occupation of Palestinian territories and to find a solution that is premised on a just settlement with just laws that are rights-based and which facilitate equality and equity for all who have a right to live in the territories of those two states that we wish to welcome, those of Israel and Palestine. I thank you, Chairperson.